Next up, we have Parasect. Fans of the Indigo League anime will remember the episode where after being okoed by a light breeze from Ash's Pikachu, Cassandra's Paris eventually evolved into what's quite frankly a terrifying Pokemon once you really think about the idea of the parasitic mushroom. Today, we'll be examining if this creepy crawler critter can withstand the critical standards of the competitive scene. So we ask, how good was Parasect actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Parasect had no place in the RBY metagame whatsoever. Its bug stab is of no use in thwarting the metagame's dominant psychics, given that not only does it have unimpressive bulk and lacks a psychic resist, the only bug move it has is the pathetic leech life, which is so weak that it almost never 4-hit KOs the physically frail Alakazam and isn't guaranteed to 4-hit KO the even frailer Jinx. Parasect also packs nasty weaknesses to ice moves and Zapdos' drill pack. Its quadruple Drupal Earthquake Resistance is nearly useless since Rhydon and Golem trash it with rock slides and the normals will beat it anyway. It has no offense to offer whatsoever between its low attack, special, and pitiful Snorlax tier speed, meaning that even having access to the best sleep move in the game in Spore doesn't carve out any sort of niche for it since it's just a bad Pokemon outside of that. Executor may have to rely on the shakier sleep powder, but other than that, it completely outclasses Parasect with its superior offenses, much better better speed, bulk, psychic typing, granting it both stab psychic as well as a resistance to opposing psychics, and explosion, while being able to resist the rock and ground types as earthquake without fearing the accompanying rock slide. And unlike Parasect, it is also notably able to use its offenses to pressure paralyzed psychic types that would attempt to block its sleep powder. There was just no hope for Parasect whatsoever. Even in UU, it was such dead weight that it wasn't even used despite Spore, which is saying something considering how powerful Gen 1 sleep is, with its potential lengthy durations essentially KOing a Pokemon. The problem was that using Parasect basically meant its user was playing 5v5 at best. Jinx and OU sometimes faced similar problems, but it was still worth using because it had a high potential upside after it dished the sleep out, whereas Parasect had absolutely none. In short, Gen 1 Parasect was basically the worst. Gen 2 brought Sleep Talk, Leftovers, and a host of terrific new Pokemon, including Steel types, somehow managing to make Parasect even worse. Now it did get some buffs, if one could call them that, with decent stab attacks in Hidden Power Bug and Giga Drain. However, this wasn't anywhere what it needed to keep up with UU, let alone OU, as the metagame both hit it hard from every direction with Pokemon like Needle Queen and Scyther, while also tanking it easily with Quillfish and Granbull. It dropped to NU, but even there it struggled severely. Its weaknesses were attacked at every point, and being as slow as it was made it incredibly easy to take advantage of. Fire types such as Flareon, Rapidash, Ninetales, and Magmar were everywhere, and they were excellent. Parasect was a grass type that couldn't handle Sudowoodo and Graveler because of its rock weakness. In general, it just struggled to find any sort of defensive niche that would actually let it consistently switch in to make use of Spore, and its inability to do much after sleeping something was glaring as always. Gen 3 saw the sleep durations shorten significantly, and a new Spore Pokemon in the form of the dangerous Breloom. Breloom, Venusaur, and the meta game defining Celebi, in addition to OU's power level growing to higher and higher extremes, with additions such as Choice Ban and Split EVs, meant Parasect stood absolutely no chance whatsoever. Power Creep trickled down to UU, where Parasect's many crippling weaknesses ran wild, and it was also completely and utterly outclassed by Vileplume. Anything you could possibly want Parasect to do, Vileplume would do better. Parasect wound up in NU again, but this time it wasn't nearly as good. It wasn't really worth using it even down there. Its mediocre bulk combined with awful speed, easily exploitable weaknesses, and lack of useful moves outside of Spore meant it would just be dead weight. Hell, even Murkrow was a top tier Pokemon down there, and its Insomnia ability would prevent Parasect from even getting a Spore off before instantly threatening it with its dangerous choice band drill packs. As if that wasn't bad enough, Parasect was outdone by the excellent Roselia, whose spike support was a lot more useful in each game than any aromatherapy antics Parasect could muster. It's cruel, but the mushroom was just not worth using at all. Gen 4's power creep included not just a lot of Pokemon that destroyed Parasect, such as Heatran and Infernape, but also Stealth Rock, making it even more difficult for Parasect to switch in, as if it needed any help in that department. Fellow Spore using Mushroom Breloom also gained some tremendous buffs and became one of the metagame's biggest threats. Honestly, the idea of Parasect in OU has probably never been conceived of until the making of this video. Sadly, Yu Yu wasn't looking much better for it, since Stealth Rock existed there as well. Yu Yu grass types were a 
competitive field with Venusaur being arguably the best Pokemon in the tier and others such as Leafeon and Torterra being excellent. And none of these other grass types were Stealth Rock weak. It was just too much of a defense hindrance. Parasect did gain dry skin, but it didn't help its viability. Physical water attackers like Azumarill and Feraligatr would just ice punch it, or in Kabutops' case, rip it apart with Stab Stone Edge. And speaking of Kabutops, Parasect wasn't good against Rain Dance teams either, as not only did it fold to Kabutops something fierce, but on top of that, its Ice Beam weakness was a lot more noticeable and exploitable than Venusaur's, thanks to its Stealth Rock weakness on top of that. In general, Parasect was a far worse Venusaur. It had the perfectly accurate sleep move over it, but Venusaur wasn't Rock or Stealth Rock weak, was immune to Toxic and absorbed Toxic Spikes, wasn't weak to U-turn, had good speed and dangerous offensive capability, and significantly better bulk to boot. Parasect dropped to NU, but all that was was another place for it to be outclassed by another grass poison type, Vileplume, who was sort of a mini Venusaur, and remained wholly superior to Parasect by quite some distance. Victory Bell went more in the way of pure offense, but it too was far, far better. Other NU grasses included Cacturn, Meganium, Jump Pluff, and Blossom, and all of them performed better and offered more than Parasect. Even Tropius could sweep once in a blue moon with Dragon Dance. There truly was no use for Parasect in OU, UU, or NU. It was one of the worst fully evolved Pokemon in the game. But somehow, it managed to eke out the slightest of slight niches in Ubers of all tiers. Kyogre's Choice Specs Water Spout was the most terrifying attack around. It performed absurdities like easily two-hit KOing, the insanely bulky Calm Blissey, and even a fully invested Dialga, who resisted the move, doing 60% minimum to both. However, this move that brought the best Pokemon in the game to their knees did approximately negative 25% damage to Parasect. It healed off its Stealth Rock weakness, in fact, thanks to Dry Skin. Parasect would then spore something on Kyogre's team in an infuriating reversal of both momentum and the natural order. Parasect even shrugged off Kyogre's thunder without much trouble and got extra recovery in rain as a secondary benefit of dry skin. Of course, this was a tiny, tiny niche that was almost surely not worth bringing to a serious battle, as Parasect didn't counter anything else and couldn't even reliably check Kyogre itself over the course of the game on account of being completely eviscerated by Ice Beam, a move Kyogre sometimes likes to throw out to nab the Laddie Twins, who were some of its few checks thanks to Soul Dew, and of course, Calm Mind sets would completely ruin Parasect. However, the true threat of Kyogre is its immediate, mind-bendingly powerful Water Spout, and being able to prevent it from doing any damage at all, even once, could turn the tide of the game. Especially when Parasect responded with something as efficacious as Sleep. Once specially defensive Ludicolo and Quagsire were discovered, Parasect's niche became mostly obsolete, since they didn't get ravaged by Kyogre's Ice Beam and lose health when Groudon switched in and replaced the rain with Sun. But for a time, Parasect stopped the most dangerous Pokemon in the game, which Pokemon far better than it can't claim. As for VGC, Parasect had one glorious moment in the sun, and in the rain, and the snow, and the sand for that matter. The Weather Wars of 2010 VGC provided ideal conditions for Parasect to survive, as the mushroom on its back was nourished by the unending rain and given ample sunlight with which to sustain in itself. But for real, Parasect, a Pokemon known for its almost laughably bad defensive typing, actually had the benefit of resisting both of the stats of the weather Pokemon that ruled VGC 2010. What's more, Dry Skin let Parasect make a pose and Kyogre think twice, lest they just end up healing it. Parasect's real edge, of course, was its access to Spore, which, when paired with Trick Room, made Parasect an absolute monster to face. With no Sleep Claws, Parasect could exploit its low speed to take any of the opposing Pokemon out of commission. And even if they happened to protect, you basically had the same effect of neutralizing it. And should Parasect force a Protect, it actually could get a lot done offensively. By some miracle, Parasect's usually lackluster stab combo was perfectly suited for the VG. 2010 metagame, letting it hit Groudon, Kyogre, Mewtwo, Abomasnow, Tyranitar, Cresselia, and Ludicolo for super effective damage. If we take a look at the top world's teams from 2010, Parasect could hit 29 out of the 48 Pokemon brought super effectively with just two moves, an impressive aspect for a Pokemon whose real job was just to send everyone off to have sweet dreams. Now sure, Ho-Oh might murder you 16 times over, but it can't do that when it's asleep. The most well-known Parasect was Huey Haas, who took the beast to fifth place 
at World alongside Iron Ball Mewtwo. And I'm guessing that's why you guys asked for Parasect this week, since it was also paired with last week's subject in Obama Snow. But Huey didn't innovate Parasect. In fact, he was inspired by Jason Artie Winja, who first put the spotlight on Parasect at the Seattle Regionals. Jason used a static team of four Pokemon, as was semi-common in 2010, but you have to remember that in 2008, only four Pokemon were allowed anyways, and with no team preview, many opted to build a static forward they could bring in in every situation. His Parasect was partnered with a fellow sleep abuser in Breloom, along with the fourth gen duo of Palkia and Dialga, who funnily enough, were primarily there to set Trick Room. Jason was a big fan of Substitute and Protect, running it on both Breloom and Parasect. His Parasect in particular, for Went X Scissor in favor of Substitute Safety, which could keep Parasect safe should an unfortunate early wake up occur. Though Jason didn't make top 16 at regionals, he managed to become a finalist, and the success of his Parasect was cheered enthusiastically by his crew, the Mighty Ducks, including one Huey Ha. Huey would later refine the idea of Parasect, adding X Scissor over Substitute, and making a few other adjustments to the team. Jump Pluff replaced Breloom for faster speed and encore support, burning any Lum or Chesto Berries before Parasect hit the field. Jump Pluff was enabled by Groudon, and Huey rounded out the team with Obama Snow and his famous Iron Ball Mewtwo. The dual Groudon Obama Snow pairing, however, was the real coup. While Parasect had tools against all weather users, Groudon and Obama Snow matched up against by far the best due to Fire Blast and Blizzard. If Huey was playing against an opposing Obama Snow or Groudon, well, great, his team was built that way, anyways, and he could bring in Blizzarding Mewtwo or Chlorophyll Jump Pluff to wreak havoc, or just let his own Groudon go off. If they were playing Rain or Sand, they would have to bring those mons in so Huey couldn't abuse his own sun or snow. And once that happened, Parasect could go to town due to its incredibly good matchups against both Kyogre and Tyranitar. Kyogre in particular was completely abused due to Parasect's dry skin, which made opponents stare on helplessly as Parasect put their team to sleep and healed in the meantime. Huey may have placed fifth and not won the whole thing, but his Parasect team goes down in history as one of the most creative ever, and Parasect's only real success. Come Gen 5, there was a new mushroom on the block, one that didn't have a four times weakness to fire and flying. Gen 5 OU finally had some aspects that leaned in Parasect's favor. Permanent rain? Yes, please. Sleep mechanics making Spore basically an automatic KO? Sign Parasect up. Unfortunately, it ended there, since Parasect's stats were still miserable. OU was more loaded than ever with big, powerful attackers like Latios and Terrakion that would wipe Parasect out without a second thought. Among them was Breloom, who was a much better abuser of Spore given its speed, bulk typing, ability to heal in sand, not just rain and offensive prowess, which most notably allowed it to crush the Ferrothorn that would sit on Parasect all day. It'd be nice if Parasect worked, and did actually technically check Keldeo, but it was outclassed badly by Breloom and later Amoongus, and got destroyed by the rest of the metagame. And as should be expected by now, Yu instantly passed Parasect by, as did the new Ryu, as it was the same old story of it being slow, packing a million highly exploitable weaknesses, and offering nothing outside of Spore. In NU, Parasect was actually not bad on its own, as it had some seriously good entry points, most notably against Golurk and Lomomola, as well as against Sox Banded Close Combats and Earthquakes. And after switching into these common Pokemon, it could grab a pseudo KO with Spore, proceeding to stay healthy with Leech Seed to offset its Stealth Rock weakness while wearing down the opponent, which meant it could switch in to be useful again later in the game. The combination of Leech Seed alongside Stab X Scissor was also quite useful as it thwarted the Grass Types and Magic Guard Duotion that would be immune to the Seeds. The problem was that as a defensive grass type, Eviolite Tangela equipped with immense bulk, regenerator, and no stealth rock weakness was entirely superior, and the extra 25% accuracy Parasect got on its sleep move wasn't worth passing up Tangela's good qualities. If it hadn't been for Tangela, Parasect might have gotten looked at a little more, but as that was sadly not the case, it languished in obscurity. Gen 6 made some mechanics changes not at all favorable to Parasect's lifeline in Spore. Sleep duration reverted to its generation 3 and 4 mechanics, and grass types could no longer be put to sleep by the move, meaning it could now quite feasibly be easily prevented from doing the one thing that tenderly tethered it to the slightest fringe of usability. However, this was mostly just beating a horse that had died a noticeable time prior. Parasect dropped to the new lowest tier, PU. And if there's anyone with any knowledge out there about possible alternate timelines, then 
please let us know. But even if Gen 6 hadn't shafted it with the Spore nerf, it's basically a certainty Parasect would have ended up there anyway. As there's Mega Field Power Creep, Trickle Down Effect into lower tiers, this poor Pokemon in dire need of help got nothing new, that whole thing. Parasect wasn't able to find a real niche in PU either, as Evil Light Tangela was back to fully outclass it. The tier also had other excellent defensive grass types in Roselia and Gorgeist Extra Large, the latter of which made up for lacking a sleep move via access to moves most grass types didn't have, namely Willow Whiffs and Fire Blast, as well as its signature Trick or Treat. There really was no respite for Parasect, and thus it was never even used in PU. It just floundered haplessly against pretty much the entire tier, which had no problems destroying it. From Fire types to Swana to Roselia to just about everything. Twas a sad sight. Gen 7 came, everything got stronger thanks to Z-Moves, and Parasect got zilch, yada yada yada. Tangela, Roselia, and Gorgeist wound up in PU again, and Parasect could not muster a single reason it would be better than any of them. This generation introduced the notion of being untiered for fully evolved Pokemon, too unfit for even the use of PU, and it should shock no one that Parasect was just that. There's not too much more to it than that, Parasect was just brutally, painfully flawed in all the worst ways, with nearly nothing to redeem it. If there was ever a Kanto Pokemon that needed some serious redesign, so it's not doomed to repeat this process for eternity, it's Parasect. Parasect's one other footnote in VGC history came at the hands of Lai Ching Yang, who showcased its capabilities at a Hong Kong special event in 2017 on a team with Oranguru, Mimikyu, Torkoal, Sableye, and Snorlax. While he placed fifth in the event, we don't know anything about his team, but can assume that it's a fairly standard Trick Room setup, most likely using Parasect for Spore, Rage Powder, and maybe even Solar Beam alongside with Torkoal. Really though, if you have the chance, just use Amoongus. And that's it, so how good was Parasect actually? Well, one of the worst Pokemon of all time sounds about right. It was consistently landing in the lowest tier and being completely unusable even down there. It was amusingly able to sort of stop Kyogre by surprise for a brief spell in Gen 4 Ubers, but other than that, the combination of its horrific typing coupled with its stats, which ranged from average to appalling and a mostly bland move pool, meant even a move as good as Spore couldn't prevent Parasect from toiling, if even that, in the lowest depths of competitive Pokemon. In terms of VGC, it had some decent success in 2010, but then Amoongus arrived in Generation 5, and nobody ever thought about Parasect again. Well, until like one event in 2017. But that didn't mean Amoongus still wasn't far better. Overall, if Parasect is released in the future, it better come with a significantly buffed Galarian form that makes up for its nearly two and a half decades of suffering. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Light Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Parasect? If you were to make a Galarian form of it, what would you make it? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.